Dear students, in this module, we are going to try and score the peptide sequence tags. The peptide sequence tags were just small amino acid sequences that were reported from the MS2 data. Now, we have searched these PSTs in the protein sequence databases and those proteins that have those peptide sequence tags are now collected in the form of a candidate protein list. It is very important in the protein search process because each PST gives you a clue about the precursor protein. So let's take a look at how we can incorporate them into the search process. The scoring scheme can be very simple to begin with. If a candidate protein matches n number of PSTs, then its score can be given by a simple summation over n where you have n PSTs. So to give you an example, if protein A has three PSTs, protein B has two PSTs, then you can have the n here equal to three in case of protein A or equal to two in case of protein B. So next you compute the length of the PST so you have let's say protein A which has three PSTs then PST1 PST2 PST3 will have different length so you have to get the length of each PST you have to square it so if PST1 has length 1 then 1 squared will be 1. If PST2 has length 2, then the square will be 4. And if PST3 has length 4, then the square will be 16. It simply means that the longer the peptide sequence tag, the more probable or the higher score should be given to that peptide sequence tag. So once you compute the length, and you square it then you have a number coming out and you do it for n PSTs and you sum them together. So this will give you the PST score for the protein. So each protein in the protein database will have a PST score which it got after it was compared with the MS2 data from the experiment. Moreover there is another concept that we need to introduce here, the RMSE, the root mean squared error. It can better talk about the quality of each PST match. You know that each PST will result from a comparison with the molecular weight of the amino acids. However, there is a chance that the comparison does not give you an exact match. Let's take an example. If this is your mass over charge axis and this is the abundance, then you have two peaks that are reported from MS2. Now, if you subtract this peak from this peak, let's say peak Y and peak Z. So if you calculate Z minus Y and you have some mass, we call it the mass difference. So this mass difference will not essentially match exactly with the molecular weight of the amino acid. So there will be a slight tolerance within which we have to match, which is actually very small. So RMSE would mean that you have to accumulate all such matches. So let me draw that small tolerance. So if this mass difference is within some mass tolerance then we select this mass range now all of these RMSEs or offsets give you the quality of the peptide sequence tag so in order to incorporate them into the search what you see here is the mass of the difference the mass difference mass difference that we just saw between the experimental peaks 
and the mass of the amino acid from the table. So if there is some difference between these two, then you simply take the square and the square root in order to take the absolute value and you sum them for all n PSTs. This will give you the RMSE or simply the quality of the PST. Extending the previous scoring scheme that only depended on the length of the PST, now you can put this RMSE here. You can simply divide the score of each PST by its RMSE, which means smaller the RMSE, the bigger the score and the better the match. And you arrive at a final PST score. So this PST score incorporates the length as well as the RMSE of the PSTs. So we extract these PSTs and search the entire database and we arrive at the score, the overall score including the length and the RMSE. We sort the scores and the protein from the database that is at the top. The top candidate protein is most probably the protein of your sample.